Have you ever wondered why most training aids don't work? The simple answer is this. When you buy a training aid, how do you use it? Well, you probably use it on the range and maybe it's something you wear or a club that you practice swings with but you can't hit balls. So it's not like how you actually play golf. In an ideal world, you'd be able to take that training aid to the golf course, even if you're playing in a tournament at your local club, and be able to use it in the context of playing a round of golf. But of course, training aids are illegal. You can't use your training aid if you've got something to wear across your arms, your legs, or whatever, because it's basically considered cheating. So in an ideal world, we would have something that would allow us to use these training aids in the real world on the golf course when it actually counts, when we're counting those strokes. But Pretty much all training aids don't allow that, except for this. The G-Force is the first training aid that not only teaches you how to have good rhythm and tempo, but how to shallow out your swing, how to feel a proper release, but most important of all, it's USGA legal. That's right, this can be used as one of the clubs in your bag. So instead of going out to the range, hitting a bunch of balls with your training aid and then trying to remember what it felt like on the course, under pressure, you can actually carry these clubs, they've got a wedge, a driver, and a seven iron, as a club, a legal club, in your bag. That's amazing, it's the first training aid that I know of that's USGA approved that you can do that with. So, instead of just practicing and practicing and practicing and just trying to do millions and millions of reps and hoping that it somehow translates over to the golf course and you can see what it's like in the real world, these clubs actually allow you to do that. You can actually play golf with them. And the new updated versions are completely different than the old G-Force because the swing weight is now balanced to what is considered a standard for most average golf clubs made. So I believe a D2 is a standard swing weight. So these actually feel balanced like your regular clubs. That's the other problem with training aids is you've got a heavy club. Well, heavy club doesn't really do much of any good or perhaps it's got an illegal grip on or something. These have standard grips. What this is, it's just a replacement for your seven iron. It's a replacement for your wedge. It's a replacement for your driver even to get the feel of what you're trying to do in your swing. Because at the end of the day, there's only a couple things you really need to do to play great golf. You need to be relatively on plane and you need to release the club. If you do those two things, then you're off to the races. You can play great golf, you can release the club, you can have good speed. You don't have to work so hard, you can take a ton of stress off your body and you can hit the ball consistent. But the trick is you need to do that under pressure. You need to do that when your brain is thinking, oh my gosh, don't hit it left, don't hit it right, oh, there's OB here, oh, whatever. You have to be able to train your mind to be able to handle those stresses and work on your swing at the same time. And that's where there's always been a huge disconnect. It's why I created the dead drill that so many of you are familiar with, because you can do it on the course in the middle of a round. All you simply do, is take your shoulder back, you shift into the right, post shift back to the left, post up, and that's the whole thing. If you can do this, you can play great golf. When you combine that with the, the G-Force clubs, you can start to feel what it feels like to make a proper swing because it's going to start showing you immediately when you make a mistake, even during the takeaway, for example. So you just start taking the club back and your hands go away inside. The club, because the shaft is flexible, but not as, it seems a little bit stiffer than it was before. It feels more balanced. The older ones kind of got a little out of control. If you have a good rhythm and tempo, the club will swing like a natural club the whole time. It doesn't feel like some gimmicky training aid anymore. It feels like a golf club that you can play with. And that's what's so cool about this. You can hit shots, you can play golf, and you can practice working on your swing. And these are a couple things I wanna share with you how to get the most out of this. The first one, the most important thing that most golfers struggle with is swinging over the top. And the simple truth of the matter is it's so easy to fix it when you understand what it feels like to swing correctly. Most golfers who swing over the top, it's because they're either hacking at it with their arms or they're trying to hit the ball with their shoulders and chest. Here's a simple little feel to get you to swing the club on plane. All you need to think about is throwing a ball with your trail arm. If you do this and you think about throwing it sidearm, you'll naturally start to get to an, into a position that has the club shallowing out. If you're doing this, that's the opposite of throwing a ball sidearm. You'll naturally start to clear your hips, and when you do it with the G-Force club, you'll feel when you start swinging over the top because the club will flex in the opposite direction. But if you start making the swing as you were gonna throw to shallow and get that little sidearm motion, the club will naturally stay back, and you'll feel what it feels like to be on plane. The last thing, and in my opinion, one of my favorite things about this club 
is being able to release it. Remember I said you need two things. You need to be relatively on plane and you have to release the golf club. What's cool about the G-Force is you can feel what the release feels like. I'm gonna hit a few balls for you just to, in just a moment. And I'm gonna show you the tendencies that you'll probably tend to make and how to correct it. Because if you don't release the club face, you can make a perfect backswing, a perfect downswing, and it'll all be for naught. You'll still hit a poor shot because the club face will be open or close too much if you don't release it correctly. So the trick is getting a feel for the release. And that's one of the really hard things to teach amateur golfers because it's such an intuitive thing. Teaching somebody how to release something that's moving at 100 miles an hour that requires millimeter level precision, that's not something you can do and break it down into math and science. You have to feel that. And that's what this is so great about because you will feel immediately if that club face is hanging open. If you're not releasing it correctly, the club gives you the feedback because of the flexibility of the shaft. So I'm gonna hit a couple now and I wanna show you what it's gonna do when you do it correctly and when you do it wrong. Okay, the first mistake I'm gonna show you is what is super, super common. I've seen it in thousands of my students over the years. They're trying to rotate their body through the shot instead of letting the club release. Remember, it's called a release for a reason. It doesn't mean you keep driving your shoulders through. Not only is that hard on your body, but it costs you a ton of speed and makes the ball wanna leak out to the right. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like when you do it with the G-Force. So I'm just gonna rotate my shoulders through a little too much. And you see the ball squirted off to the right and is tailing off to the right. Not a good shot. So what I wanna feel, what I want the G-Force to give me the feedback of is not turning my shoulders through the shot, but getting into that sidearm throw. Think less about rotation, because you can have too much of a good thing, and think more about getting that club to shallow, bringing your right elbow down into your right hip pocket and getting in a position to throw. And once you have that, you'll be on plane and the club will naturally want to release. Because if you're not turning through, you're not dragging the club face through the hitting area anymore. So now if I just slow everything down, so what's beautiful about this, it's actually easier on my body to swing correctly than to do it incorrectly. So now instead of rotating through, I'm just gonna get a feel for a throw and let the club naturally release. And you'll see the club, the ball will straighten out. And you can see a nice straight ball actually is drawing back to the left just a little bit. That is smoother and easier and more flowing by simply letting the club turn over. Let the club release. Feel what the shaft is trying to teach you. Because if you can sense what this club shaft is doing, which having a flexible shaft makes it so much easier to sense what the club face is doing throughout the swing, to give you a better sense of feel in your hands, give you better dexterity, so that you can feel how the club naturally wants to release over. And as you slow your body down, instead of trying to rip it through so much, you'll start to feel how the club naturally wants to turn over. I'm gonna give you one more little checkpoint that I want you to practice with the wedge. And what's cool about this, again, if you're gonna take this out to the course with you, which is the whole point, you can go out, play real rounds of golf with these training aids and get a feel for what it feels like in the real world. So one day you might take the seven iron with you because you're gonna work more on your full swing. And then the next day, maybe you take the pitching wedge out. This is a 55 degree wedge, actually more of like a sand wedge. And you can start working on short game shots as well because the same sense of rhythm and tempo and release, it's the same with your short clubs as it is with the longer clubs. So a good little checkpoint to work on to get the feel for this natural release that the club is trying to teach you is hitting little tiny chip shots with it and check the toe of the club in the release. And what you'll see, if you do it incorrectly, you could hold a glass of wine on the club face. That's gonna, when you're doing this with a full swing, it's gonna almost always lead to shots that go out to the right with a cut spin. What you wanna feel is let the club swing naturally, and as you do this and stop trying to fight it and hold it off, the club face should be towed up or slightly towed in on these little chip shots. So you're, you've hit a little shot into the, you've got a little wedge shot into the green, just a little baby chip shot. You can get the feel for it using the G-Force wedge, and you can get a feel checking the club face and making sure that this little blue line at the bottom is perpendicular to the ground or vertical. That will give you a sense of feel for your short shots that you can then carry on to the seven iron, and then of course carry on to the driver, which I'm gonna hit now. Now with the driver, what you're going to find is that the mistakes that you tend to make in your swing 
are going to be far more exaggerated. So if you struggle with releasing the club or you're not getting on plane, the driver's just going to exaggerate it even more. So I recommend starting with the wedge, working up to the seven iron, as your rhythm and tempo improve and you get a good sense for the feel of the club face, which is so much easier to sense when you have a flexible shaft. When you grab the driver, what you're gonna feel, the, the trick to putting this together is that you're slowing your body down. You don't wanna try to speed your body up with the club. It's natural, it's instinctual to do that, but it's a mistake. And that's why most golfers struggle so much with the driver. They just try to swing incorrectly too hard. So what you'll notice when I hit this ball with the driver, so I'm actually gonna swing pretty smooth and gradual because I wanna make sure that this club shaft has time to catch up and release and the club face has time to square up. Of course, by the time I'm working on the driver, I've been working on it with the wedge, I've been working on it with the seven iron first because the driver is going to exaggerate your swing mistakes even more. So get a feel for nice and smooth, working back and through and not trying to rotate through so aggressive because if you do, that ball's gonna squirt off to the right every time. So nice and smooth, oops, that's one. <laughs> nice and smooth, take your time and get a nice feel for the release of the club. Woo, that ball smoked. Look at that thing. Now, I probably look like I was swinging like an LPGA player there. Super smooth, super, super relaxed, but the ball still flew comfortably at least 250 yards in the air, swinging that easy. You don't have to swing hard to get speed, you have to release it. To get a feel for the release, having a club that you can use on the course is exactly what you need.